So I have a random video to get out of my system. <laughs> I got a variety of things I've picked up recently that I've not shared with you, and I'm not sure that I'm going to do an individual video on each of these things. But I want to show you because you're going to see them showing up in videos. Now, the first thing you've, well, you haven't seen it, but a few people have called me out on it. A couple years ago, I went through the search trying to find a remote control for my ShopSmith dust collector. My ShopSmith dust collector draws, I don't know, something over 10 amps when you start it up. And I have to wait till my Mark V's on full power before I turn it on. If I have them on the same circuit, there's a chance I will blow that circuit. Now, I do everything I can to minimize that. I have many outlets in my shop now, several different circuits. I'm running the Mark V on as short of an extension cord as I can get, but I still prefer to have a delay between turning on the Mark V and turning on my ShopSmith dust collector. So what this switch does is pretty cool. It's got a short little pigtail, and then it can be mounted on the wall right next to your receptacle. And what you do is you plug in your shop vac or your dust collector or your blower, whatever you're using, into this port. And then you plug in your power tools. In my case, I've been running my Mark V here. I could have a chop saw or some other tool plugged in here. When you turn the Mark V on, there's a delay. And then it automatically turns on the dust collector. But wait, there's more let's say you're running a joiner or a planer when you get done running that machine and you turn it off there are still chips in the hose and so with this you can select how long you want your dust collector or vacuum to continue to run before it shuts off the lowest uh, time here is let's see three seconds then there's seven seconds and there's 10 seconds uh, there's also a few other settings on here that you can do but so far that's all i've done and since I've been running this, which has now been a couple months, I think I'm beyond the return period on it. I think it had like a 90-day warranty. Um, it, it's been working great, no problems at all. So uh, something worth looking at maybe. A couple other things that have been going on. I, I think maybe I've mentioned to you guys that I am dyslexic. I really, really struggle if I've got to look at a number and then transfer that number somewhere or measure something, write the number down, then transfer that. So I've, I've been looking for a way to minimize the amount of times I'm having to write and transfer. Uh, for years, I've been using this uh, fast cap tape measure. This is the both metric and standard tape measure, and it's got a really cool little notepad built into it and a pencil sharpener. It's still my go-to. It's a nice size. It's only a 12-foot tape, and uh, it's handy. It, the, the couple deficits that it has, it, it doesn't do a good job of measuring inside dimensions because, because of this rubber case, it doesn't measure well to the inside. And in fact, they don't even bother telling me what this dimension is. Some tape measures have on them an indication of exactly how wide the body is. So if you're measuring, let's say, like the inside of, of a box like this, you could measure the inside and then add whatever dimension it tells you the body of the tape amounts to. This one's only inches. And at work, I use in the met work in the metric system. In my own shop, it's a mix. So one of my coworkers recently told me about this tape, now it's not available to the best of my knowledge in, in standard, it's only available in metric. And I don't know whether I can endorse this yet or not, but boy, is it interesting. Some of the things about it is uh, it, it's automatically locked until you unlock it, which means when you let go, it's automatically locked. And it's got a scribing point on the end here. It also has a thin scribing point here on the mouth of it. And what you can do with this device, which is really kind of fascinating, I can measure from the outside of this over to here and slide the body of the tape up to that and then pull it away. So as long as it's not an unwieldy length, I've got that measurement locked in right here on the end of the tape. Um, it doesn't have the measurement for the body on it, but it does this differently. What it does, instead of, you know, most tapes have got a movable tab on the end to, to accommodate the thickness of this tab. 
without that moving, and, and some folks think that that's defective, it's not. Without it moving, you can't get an inside measurement. Well, what this tape measure does, it's kind of cool, is it's got like a little roll top door on it. And as I open this door on the back, out pops a 100 millimeter or four inch little extension. And so now this can go inside of my box. And again, it's locked down and I can easily read my dimension and add 100 millimeters. And you got to remember to add 100 millimeters. It, it's got a few other features on it that uh, I won't go into until I play with it some more. But it's crazy. Now, I don't like the fact it doesn't have inches on it. Uh, I'm going to miss the little notepad on it. It, it, this particular version doesn't even have a belt clip on it. It's very short. It's only uh, three meters, a little over 12 feet. I'll see how it works. But it's called it's called a Holtefort Talimeter. <laughs> this rolls off the tip of your face, doesn't it? There's a bunch of videos on YouTube. If you want to look that up and check those videos out, guys, that have been using it. It's a German tool. But it came up because of the fact that I'm dyslexic and a coworker said that might help. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Now, I've become, in recent years, a little bit of a WEN fanboy. You might have seen um, David Picciuto, formerly the Drunken Woodworker. Glad you changed channel name, David. Uh, bought a whole bunch of tools from WEN. I've been using WEN for years. In fact, I've now lived through three different eras of WEN. Back when I was a kid, I was using WEN tools that my dad bought back in the 50s and 60s. And that was really their original heyday. Then they struggled. They went through some lawsuits trying to protect patents, which they failed because, you know, so easy to work around patents, apparently. And so back in the 80s and 90s, their tools were pretty much, well, third rate. The, the joke that we had back, back when I was using those tools was someday they hoped to be good enough to be considered Black & Decker quality. Well, they went away completely but have come back, come roaring back in recent years, primarily as an importer. And they're selling tools that I find to be a level above Harbor Freight tools, but very economically priced. So, so far, you've seen me use three different track saws from WEN. I bought a cordless uh, biscuit joiner that uses the same batteries as my cordless um, track saw. I, I just bought yet another when saw blade. I've been going through a number of their blades. I'm running a couple 10 inch blades on my table saw right now from when. This is a fine tooth blade that I'm gonna be using on an upcoming project with my track saw. Uh, it seems like most of their blades are mislabeled on Amazon. They're almost all labeled as being Chinese and yet they, they have on them Thailand. I don't know what that, why that is. But I've been very pleased, and they're incredibly economically priced. So if you're looking maybe at a no-name blade to solve a problem that, you know, like you need to buy a ripping blade, for example, or a, a very fine-tooth cross-cut blade that you're not going to be using every day, um, and so you don't want to invest a bunch of money in it, you might want to look at those. Now, all that said, now that I have a couple cordless WEN tools, uh, I, I went looking for a a um, an 18 gauge pin nailer. Now, I bought the Harbor Freight Bauer stapler, used it for a weekend and then returned it. It was just, it, it jammed more often than it drove staples. But uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that that is not gonna be my experience here with this tool. So again, it uses the exact same batteries as two other tools that I already own. I had this out of the package. It reminds me an awful lot of the Bauer, um, and, and I can't wait to play around with it. This is just a nailer it is or pinner. It is not a, uh, a stapler. Some of the things that it has on it, though, is it does have the ability to fire with the trigger or with a bump. I'm not bumping this. I'm not driving in roofing nails with this at all, but uh, you'll see this showing up as I build some things here real soon. I'm hoping it's going to be okay. I bought the tool only version and saved myself a little bit of money. I don't need more chargers. I don't need more batteries. Now, a while back, a longtime channel member asked me what I thought of the master plate. This is 
a tool that's designed to give you a perfectly flat surface that would go into your table saw in place of your blade while setting up the table. So you want to get your miter slots perfectly parallel to your blade, but is your blade perfectly flat? So the idea is it's a perfect, perfectly flat reference plate that you can use to set your stops and to set your table itself. Um, I've been pleased with the method that I've used for years. I use the sanding disc. You can also use a, a saw blade. So I, I had no interest in purchasing it. Well, Albert said, hey, Scott, I have purchased one of these. Can I send it to you to try out, maybe do a video on it and give some feedback? So he has sent it to me. And the one tool I don't have that I need for this is, uh, well, well, we'll get around to how we use this, but it's a dial indicator. I haven't had a dial indicator or a need for a dial indicator for years. So um, I went looking and <laughs> look, look who has a dial indicator. So I've picked up a very inexpensive, like, $15 dial indicator, and uh, we'll, we'll see how that pans out. I have three more WEN tools here. I'm only going to show you two uh, because these two are probably going to show up on the channel at some point. The third one is a log splitter, and I don't think we'll be doing that. But I have to build some very tall doors for this room. I, I'm going to be dividing the room with some with basically a movable wall. And it'll be door panels about four feet wide and just shy of 10 feet tall. So to build those, I need a nice flat surface. I do have a, a large bore of centipede, which is eight feet long, but 12 feet is longer than eight feet. So I need some additional support. So I've been looking at sawhorses, and I, I looked at the Bora. The Bora looks sweet. Uh, the Bower on the other end, very inexpensive, you know, kind of budget <laughs> cut, the, whatever, however you want to say it. Then I discovered the Wen, which is roughly the same tool as the Bower. It appears to be roughly the same. So I bought this. This is a pair of them. And uh, thought, well, let's take a look at them. Came to me from Amazon in a package that looks like it's halfway split open already. I swear to you, this isn't the first time I've opened a package in my life. So what the Bora version has going for it is you press a button or pull the trigger and the legs automatically drop out. Uh, I don't need that. I'm, I'm not tearing these down and setting them up quickly on a job site or anything. So this one. Okay. There's a button. Oh, there you go. Oh, interesting. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So this has got a few features I don't know that I'll ever need. I, I certainly don't think I'm going to need to have the ability to lay something up against it, but that is something you can do. But what I do like is you can put two by fours in between this and other sawhorses and increase its capacity. Uh, it has height adjustable legs. It's got little leveling feet. So you pull that lever down there push in on the button and that releases and then locks in place. Now the last couple items go together. Um, I bought myself a variable speed eight inch grinder, a, uh, a grinding tool. This is for positioning turning tools primarily and a CBN wheel. These are wheels that are from an, uh, made of an abrasive Kind of think of almost like a carbide or a diamond Im embedded wheel, um, and this is designed to last forever, never losing its shape, never having to be replaced as long as I don't damage it. You may have heard Stumpy Nubs talking about these and raving about these. So uh, getting getting the tool rest installed, a couple things I like and a couple things I don't like about grinders in this class. Um, the guards are usually pretty crappy. The, uh, the, the spark arresters are also usually pretty bad. The tool rests are pretty awful. My least favorite style of tool rest is this one right here. This is what the Bauer has as standard. I think the Delta does too. This one has an extra long thread on this knob and you just 
saddle this tool rest on here if you want to use that for sharpening uh, sharpening drill bits. I don't use that for sharpening drill bits. Also, this is kind of cool. Let me unscrew this real quick. When this is rotated, you can see it's got little teeth there. And so when we rotate this to various angles, it's more inclined to keep the angle. It also has the ability to tighten this up. Down here, it's, it's mounted on a single uh, bolt, but also a bolt and a pin. So as I move this in and out, it's not just dropping. Right now it's loose, but it's not falling down. Some of them are just held in place with a single, a single threaded, threaded bolt. Uh, it looks like everything needs a slight little tweak. That doesn't, doesn't look completely square to me. And so that's going to require a little bit of bending, but let's, plug this in. I don't yet have a light bulb in here. It also comes with a dressing tool, which, you know, if you don't own one of those, it's kind of nice to have it. And you know where it is if it's right there on the tool. All right, with my earbuds out so you can actually hear the sound of this. I think, yep, I'm at top speed. We'll crank it down. Low speed is 2000, top speed is 3400. Considering it's not yet bolted down to anything, also the water tray, it's pretty quiet. So real quickly, one last thing. I want to thank those of you who do take the time to occasionally open up the video description and click on those links. Those links that take you to Amazon are Amazon affiliate links, and Amazon will pay me a very small percentage, which they pay themselves if you don't click on those links. So it actually does help the channels that you like if you do use those affiliate links. It doesn't cost us more, uh, but it does help those creators. And it is with that that I've been able to here recently purchase these accessories that will make, hopefully, the videos better. So thank you, and uh, hey, visit MyGrowthRings.com. If you haven't been over there, it's actually a thing now. You can sign up for a free membership and have access to some really cool community conversations. And uh, if you want to support the channel financially, there's a way of doing that as well. MyGrowthRings.com and just look around. All right, make it a great day.